This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show on the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Hey, great friends. What's happening? Today is Monday, May 2nd, 2022. This is Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man, and we come to you from the 7 Mile Casino Studio, 7milecasino.com. Um, yesterday I got a call from a buddy of mine and he said, Hey, can we all meet for brunch? And just randomly, we were like, yeah, we're out for a walk right now. We're going to, we're going to be up in Encinitas if you want to come join us. So he wound up coming and we sit down for a little brunch on Sunday mid morning. And he said to me, he goes, how often do you broadcast from the seven mile casino studios? And I said, every day, that's the name of the studio, the seven mile casino studios. He goes, so you're not at seven mile casino. I'm like, no, I'm home, my home studio. Alex is home in his home studio. Browner is home in his home studio. We just call it the Seven Mile Casino Studios. He's like, oh, I didn't know that. We're close, me and Browner. That's true. Like 10 minutes away. Yeah, not too far. Not too far yeah. at all. As a matter of fact, I was because telling him. I could him, run to his house from my house before the segment was even over. You could run from your house to Alex's house before this segment is over. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to. I'm just saying I could. And then we could drive to Seven Mile before this segment was over. <laughs> you think true. so, huh? <laughs> yeah, uh, you, for sure. You yeah, think yeah. that's possible, do you? Yeah. Yes. I don't want to try it, but yes. Okay, got it. Um, so anyway, so he said to me, this buddy of mine said to me yesterday, he goes, he goes, is the Kung Pao chicken at Sammy's Restaurant and Bar as great as you say it is? And I go, dude, I'm telling you right now, we are planning. We're almost done. I'm about to announce it, but I, I'll wait until later in the week. We're so close to having everything wrapped up for our great friends supper club at seven mile casino studios. I said, you need to come that night and you can have the Kung Pao chicken and you can decide for yourself. That's all you make up your own mind. It is now, interesting how much you loved that Kung Pao chicken. Yeah. I don't know why I don't yeah, it really, so much it really, there. really tickled your fancy that day. Well, I don't know why it's not like if I were, to, if somebody were to say, Hey, you know, tonight let's get Chinese food. And I was like, Ooh, gotta have Kung Pao chicken. Like the it's, reason, it's, it's the not reason, my favorite thing on the menu. You know, the reason why I knew you enjoyed it because you had almost everything there and you kept talking about the Kung Pao chicken. So I think it was big Brad who turned me on to the Kung Pao chicken. He said to me, he goes, I promise you this. He said, there's not a better Kung Pao chicken in San Diego. And I don't really compare Kung Pao chickens. You know, burgers are one thing, you know, you say, Oh, this place got a great burger. That place got a great burger. And people argue about burgers. You don't hear people going who around town has got the best Kung Pao chicken. I never even really ordered Kung Pao chicken, but I will say I had it that night and it's bomb mm -hmm. AF. It is. It is. Um, okay. yeah, I don't disagree with you, but it, it is, it it's is fascinating weird. how much you love it. Yeah. It's a little weird. I admit yeah. it. I acknowledge yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, um, the reason I don't want to mention the date yet for our seven mile casino supper club is because before we get to the supper club in early June, this upcoming Friday, we're going to do something we've never done before. And for those of you that have already booked reservations, I appreciate it. For those of you that didn't or couldn't, because we already sold out, just wait for the next one. That, that's what I'm getting at here is that we're going to start doing these things. But this upcoming Friday is our first ever lunch bunch gathering. 20 people, me, Grande, Browner, Lawhead, and 16 of you guys who have all decided that you wanted to come enjoy lunch with us. We're going to do it at the tavern, which is in the front of the house at the belly up in Solana Beach. Lunch is from about 1.45 till about 3-ish. Um, everybody's already reserved, paid. Everything's ready to go. And so we'll be there on Friday for some lunch bunch action. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. this. This all got started because so many great friends, listeners were saying, dude, the boat trip during Christmas was awesome. And we all got a chance to hang out together. When are we going to do more of it? And this is the answer to that. We got lunch bunch this Friday. Hey, look, back up this weekend. We had Ivy Lounge this weekend. We had mm -hmm. Browner Comedy with Lawhead Comedy Saturday night. This upcoming Friday. We've got our lunch bunch. And then in June will be our supper club. And oh, by the way, before all of that, this Saturday, mark your calendars because we're going to be doing a ride one up e-bike demo day. And so me, Alex Browner, will all be down there for a while. It's only from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the afternoon, 10 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon. I'll give you more details as the afternoon goes on. But all of a sudden, guys, we are like back out there and I don't know, grassroots, shaking hands. Hugging it out, being with everybody. I, I gotta say, um, I'm loving it. 
I really am. I'm loving being around people again. I'm, I'm loving that everybody's coming out and it's just great to be with everybody. I had a great time Saturday night. So that's my, do I need to make a great friends calendar and put it on our website? But like, this is everything that's happening. This is where we'll be since it feels like there's a lot. Yeah. You just talked for five straight minutes about things we're doing. (laughs) Yeah, I know. We got a lot going on. We really do. All right. Let's jump into what happened this weekend. Actually, before I even do that, Alex, how was your weekend? Because you were up in Oxnard when we talked to you on Friday. You were going to marrying people. Watching people get married. Watching people. Well, I actually, uh, I did the most Mexican thing I could do. I skipped the ceremony. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was a Catholic church ceremony. And I was like, you know, I could take a break on that one. And uh, I ended up just going straight to the reception. Which How is... many people preferred if you did that, like in general? Like, do people really want you there to see them do the I do's or do they want you there for the party? Because for me, the party is fav- way more important than the I do's. I would say that if if you're doing a, a low-key, quick ceremony, you would probably want everybody there. It's quick. You know, there's, you know, it's no big deal. I think from my experience of of going to Catholic church my whole life for weddings, mm-hmm. the couple, they don't even want to be there. So <laughs> like, they're just, you know, it's a family tradition most of the time that they're just kind of getting it done and for the family and, and they don't mind because it's a huge church too. It's the biggest church in Oxnard. And, you know, even if everybody went, it wasn't going to fill the church up. It was a massive church. So I don't think they even noticed. Plus they're standing up there. They're kneeling for an hour. You know, they're not looking back. Mm-hmm. Did you Dude, go to the toppers kinda... instead? I, I Saturday, I actually, um, what did I do? I actually fell asleep. I took a nap and I woke up like 15 minutes before the ceremony. I was like, oh, I guess I'm not going. And then, yeah, I fell asleep watching Formula E. I think I tweeted at you guys. You did. Yeah. God, I just I got an email so from uh, uh, iHeartRadio that a new episode of Kaplan and Cruise available now. Listen. Get out of here. You're kidding me. 1040 a.m. <laughs> From iHeartRadio, I poop you not. Really? You got an email that you just opened from 10.40 a.m. earlier this morning? Yeah, right Brown now, 10.40 a.m. That Brown a new episode is available. Messages. Wow. That's weird. I, I Honestly, like I get these emails from iHeartMedia, and it'll be like Colin Coward has a new you know, uh, podcast available to you now. Or, for example, um, hey, Darren Smith, you know, but he works for iHeart. We don't even work for iHeart, and, and there's an email that's automatically generated like that, huh? Yeah, apparently. Probably if you, like, it. played it before you subscribed to it or something like that. Yeah. They probably have some intuitive algor- algorithm that sends it to you. Yeah. Didn't but uh, Oxnard was great. Thank you for asking. Had a great time. Took off. Do you know how long it, did I say on Friday how long it took me to get there? You Thursday? said it took, like, four four hours and changed. Six hours. No. What? How many six stops? hours. One stop to pee because I can't hold my pee for six hours. Damn, Damn. six hours, dude. There was, it looked like everybody was okay, but there was the most accidents I've ever seen driving. It was just accident after accident. No rain. Accident. No No rain. Perfect perfect weather. Dude, I had the windows down. I was, it was, it was like a nice drive, but it was, damn, it was six hours. So yesterday I woke up and I was like, okay, I could stay, have breakfast and then leave. But then I'm going to get stuck in traffic again. Mm-hmm. So I bounced yesterday like 7.30. I was like, get me wow. out of here. And I was back in San Diego by 10.30, I think. See, dude, I had a similar thing um, on Friday. I had to drive up to Hollywood and um, do a broadcast for ESPN at the Rams Draft House. And I got to say, the Rams, to their credit, they do an amazing job. They rented this house, I want to say like $300,000 to rent this house for the month. And the reason they did it is because they've got their sponsors, they've got their, um, I don't know, their partners. They, they just, they're throwing parties like every night at this crazy, crazy $42 million mansion in Hollywood. And they got the whole house decorated like the Rams. I was able to hold the Lombardi trophy. First time in my life I've ever held the Lombardi trophy, which was pretty cool. And, um, and had a chance to kind of just hang out there while the draft was going on, I mean, the, the Rams weren't drafting until like seven, eight, nine o'clock at night, really. And I just hung out there for a while, but as soon, and, and it took me a long time to get there because going to downtown LA is like a hour 45 kind of thing. Getting to Hollywood, you're, you're looking at like three hours. And so um, got done with that and just bolted right home Friday night. I have a dumb question. Mm. The Lombardi trophy, 
it's not like the Stanley Cup, right? No. Like, there's more than one. Like, everyone gets a new one. It's like the Larry O'Brien. Like, every right. once you win it, they just make another one for the next year. Right? I would say that that's probably a replica that I was holding. You know, I doubt it was the actual trophy that the Rams won. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, it felt because at the heavy. Super Bowl this year, I mm-hmm. actually went to the fan experience and I took mm-hmm. a, pi- a picture with it. But I was like, "What? What is this one? Shouldn't the Rams have this one? You know there's what I mean? No or, way oh, they haven't the won it yet, but one. it wasn't the. There's no way it was a real one. Or there's more. I'm sure the NFL's got a warehouse full of them, right? <laughs> 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 what I'm saying is the Stanley Cup. We know it's the one. Like that's there's just one. Of course, F1, okay. One that's just the one. Like they they put your name on that one and it gets passed around. Um, but the 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 Lombardi and the Larry O'Brien and the World Series that's not like that, right? They're just each everybody gets a new one. Because if you're the Patriots and you have them all on display right. at your facility, yep, aren't those the real ones you won? Right. Yeah, but what I'm saying, yeah. what I'm saying is like there isn't like one real no, one that gets be. passed around. Can't no. be. And then no. they all get like commemorative ones no it's it's okay. i'm sure like if you go into their the patriots offices there's six of them right if you go into the buccaneers office there's two of them right but what i'm you asking go to the Steelers, is there's five correct and i know that for sure but what i'm asking is the ones that the that that goodell gave to Cronky mm-hmm. in la this year mm-hmm. does that particular one that one that he was holding mm-hmm. get passed around to every team and then they just get a Lombardi trophy. To no, I think the one offices. that they the one that they hand you over the night of the Super Bowl. That's that's the one, and then they just make another one. Right. That's it's kind of like it's kinda, it's kind of like championship belts, you know. <laughs> like right. I think I think when a guy when a fighter has a championship belt and then he loses the championship belt to another guy, I don't think he actually physically takes the belt and gives it to him. Like he, well, let me rephrase that. He might give it to him, but he's already got himself a replica that's sitting in his trophy shelf at home that is like, yeah, I was the WBC super bantamweight champion. It's not like he lost the title. Therefore he gave up the belt. He's right. got a replica of some kind. And that's what these are. In fact, Alex, I don't know if you can pull it up on my social media, but I, um, I, uh, <laughs> I was holding on to this, this Lombardi trophy up at the Rams draft house. And I was getting a lot of heat from people about what the hell are you wearing? You know, like, like Mr. Sellout, Mr. L.A. Cap, what in God's name are you wearing at the Rams draft house? And I'm like, a couple things. One, you know, I'm a San Diegan, you know, even though I'm working in L.A., I'm a San Diegan. So I'm rocking some board shorts, some flip flops. And I showed up thinking that I was going to a pool party. So, yeah, I got on this ridiculous shirt with all these cocktails all over it. But again, I wasn't there just purely as a. uh you know, as a broadcaster, I thought I was going to a pool party. So that's why I was dressed like an idiot. As someone who's seen your feet. Yeah. It, it, it's surprising how cool you are just walking around showing everybody those feet. <laughs> Primarily for a couple of reasons. <laughs> one is comfort with the flip-flops, number of one. Of course. Two, my feet are gross, but they're not as gross. No, but what, I, but what I mean by that is you're at the Rams draft house. Yeah. They're gross enough to not be seen there. I mean, like, right? I was sitting, was standing around. I, I had a, probably a 20-minute conversation. Were you, the only one in, were you the only one in flip-flops? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Les Snead, the general manager, and Kevin Demoff, the CEO of the, of the Rams, I sat, sat stood there for 20 minutes talking to these two guys. Mm-hmm. And um, not one person looked down and was like, damn, your feet are gross. Because they're well, those no guys one told are in... you that. Right. No one told you that. No, but those guys are in the world of football. Football players yeah. generally. Yeah, the worst, I'm like, pretty sure they looked away and was like, yo, is this guy Kaplan's feet? What the yeah. hell is going on? Um, saw Sean McVay. He didn't make any comments about my feet. Nothing like Again. that. Again, these are pleasant guys. This is mm-hmm. a business environment. They wouldn't risk a call to HR because, or being sued. Because they said something about your feet to your I'm face. Not, so, yeah. I'm not saying that anybody was going to comment on them. I'm right. just like impressed that you just don't care. You're like, yeah, yeah, I don't care. I just right. don't even care. That's impressive to me. That's yeah, giving you a compliment and pre- talking bad about you at the same time. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. Hey, speaking of the draft, let, let's just go through this for a quick second since we're on the topic. Oh, God. Who saw it? Well, I saw the first saw round. The first round. And then I kind of saw pieces of the second and third. And then, you know, I just, I just, the only thing I really cared about afterwards was any local kids. 
You know, um, there's a kid named Cam Thomas, who was a San Diego State player from Carlsbad High School, who was drafted, I want to say, in the third round by Arizona. Does that sound right, Alex? Yes. Yeah. Um, gosh, think about that. You're a you're a big white dude from Carlsbad High and San Diego State, and you're drafted by the Arizona Cardinals as a defensive end, and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to play with JJ Watt. Like, I'm going to learn this craft from JJ Watt. What are you going to learn? How to post his workouts on the internet? You're going to learn how to become a pro's pro, buddy. Learn how to get hurt every year and collect all your money? Well, I mean, there's no doubt J.J. Watt has gotten hurt a lot in the last few years. But prior to that, there was probably about a four or five-year run where he was about the most dominant defensive end in the league. That's fair. That's fair. Before Aaron Um, Donald came around, he was probably up there. Then I think the other kid, obviously, Matt Ariza, the punter. Interesting, San Diego State punter. He's the number one ranked punter in the class yet punter two and punter three went ahead of him and he went to Buffalo. And I was reading I, about that, yeah, go ahead. about how there's their NFL teams may be overthinking it, but Matt Ariza can kick 85 yard bombs, but in the NFL that's out kicking your coverage. Mm-hmm. So they don't need you to kick 80 yard bombs in the NFL. They need you to kick it high and about 50. And they're not sure if you can do that which I found very interesting, at least this report that I read. That yeah. is it was the, very specific. That is the dumbest thing I think I've heard in a long time. The kid's a great kicker. So you're telling me he can only kick with power and not accuracy? Yeah, well, that, that's exactly what they were saying. Out. They yeah, were saying that, that, that he doesn't kick him inside the 20. Because the his, team sucked. That his corner percentage is not fantastic and that he outkicks his coverage. Yeah. Well, listen, I'll tell you this. In Buffalo. Hunting in, expert, that's just what in, I read. In Buffalo, with the winds that that howl there, um, if a normal guy could punt the ball 40 yards through the wind, maybe a riser can punt it 50, 55. I don't know. Listen, I don't know how a kid from San Diego, Rancho Bernardo High School, San Diego State, I don't know how he'll adjust to the the winter weather in Buffalo. Um, but I'm, I'm happy for him. Um, I, I know that he was probably, like, worried. Like, what happened here? I'm the number one ranked punter. How could two and three go ahead of me? But all in all, you know, San Diego State had – how many t- guys total did they have drafted San Diego Four. State? They had Cam Thomas drafted by Arizona. They had the tight end, Bellinger, nice player, drafted by the New York Giants. Matt Ariza, the kid we're talking about in the fifth round, which is still pretty impressive. And then the the offensive lineman, Browner, look at that, to your Chicago yeah. Bears, man. Is that no, the no, only no, offensive maybe. guy they took? No, I mean, don't do that to us. Because they just were receiver. like, Justin Fields, yeah, he's great. We don't need to put anybody around him. He was I mean, so good his rookie season. Let's not help him at all. This he was that good. To all you people who are, you know how many tweets I got about this? To all, <laughs> to all you people me. who think that they're not confident in him, so therefore they're not going to get him any talent because they don't care. They just want him to fail so the next guy. They're going to run the ball a hell of a lot more than they did last year. And I mean a lot. And so I don't, I wasn't looking forward to them drafting all these wide receivers. They got one wide receiver. They got a really good running back. And then they got this offensive line kid who a lot of people love that late in the draft and think that he can be a starter immediately. So I I like what they did. I like what the Bears did. I didn't watch it all. I think I only watched the second round. But I, I like what the new general manager, Ryan Pohl, said. And I'm not drafting for, ex, for, for specific positions because we were not very good. So we need everything. So I'm taking the best player available on my board. And that's what he did. So kick rocks, homie. All right, well, let's uh, let's see what the Rams and the Chargers actually ultimately Kick did rocks, here. Homie. Kick rocks, homie. Rocks, uh, put homie. it up on the screen, Alex. Let's take a look here. Um, the Rams didn't draft until later, but they did draft um, eight guys, and they also made a move to bring back a defensive back that they had from Cleveland. So they feel like they got a little bit extra because they made a trade during the, during the day. But the Rams went offensive line early, and then after that, it kind of seemed like everything was pretty much defense. I mean, they did get a running back, so, you know, just a, a guy who could maybe – maybe play a little bit, uh, maybe play special teams. But the Rams went everything defense after an offensive lineman in the third round. And the Chargers, I didn't really look too much at what the Chargers did. Did you guys? No, no. Uh, I mean, they got a they got a lineman. And because the Chargers are always the most overhyped team in the offseason, they're like, oh, that's the missing piece. They're a Super Bowl team now. They were just they were just an offensive lineman away from, yeah. from protecting Justin Herbert. That's all they needed. So that's all I saw. I saw they took a yeah. guard in the in the 17th overall pick. After that, dude, listen. The percentage of people getting like their evaluations correct are very, very low. So mm-hmm. for me to be here and tell you like, oh, the Chargers had an A grad, an A grade, which NFL.com gave them. I don't know. 
Yeah, nor do I. I don't know. I know. Have you guys incorporate their injury history there? I thought yeah. the only story that made any real news was that Kenny Pickett got taken by the Pittsburgh Steelers and Malik Willis fell so far and ended up being uh, drafted by the Titans. Those were the only two things that I saw. And then people were like, oh, the Jets did a great job. And I was like, eh. Yeah, I don't. We'll don't see know. when they're third yeah. next year, too. Yeah. Well, I want to say one thing um, as we hit this break. I'm going to send out congratulations and love to our friend Brian Bushfield from West Coast BBQ Shop, westcoastbbqshop.com. I saw they were up this past weekend in a barbecue competition in like North Central California, uh, westcoastbbqshop.com. Listen, I was talking to Brian about this on Thursday of last week. With EggFest right around the corner, it's June 12th. We want everybody to hustle up and buy your tickets to EggFest. Go to westcoastbbqshop.com. Buy your EggFest tickets. You'll save $5 when you use our promo code Kaplan5. Okay, so use that promo code. Buy two, buy four. June 12th, me, Browner, Grande will all be out there. Take over the parking lot. Big green eggs everywhere. Award-winning chefs from all over the place. And we are going to eat all day long. Buy your tickets now. WestCoastBBQShop.com. EggFest is June 12th. And we will see you guys down there. We got a lot to get to. Let's find out what happened with the Padres this weekend. Next, this is Kaplan and Crew. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Dominating the SoCal radio airwaves for over 20 years. Join Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner for Kaplan and Crew every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. Only on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk, and the Mightier 1090.com. I say we get rid of it. We? I was the one who went and got it. What if he finds out we opened it? If your crazy neighbor cared, he wouldn't have thrown it away, right? This is bad. This is bad. This is bad, what we're doing. I wonder if this was Grandma's. <gasps> Today was my first day at Lockwood Hat. Nobody wants you here. This white boy kept staring at me. I'm James. Why are you talking to me? This is not like any other relationship. One slip and we're done for. What I care about is this family's reputation. Rugby, it's America's fastest growing sport and the predecessor of American football. Combining football's physicality, the free-flowing grace of soccer, the ball-handling skills of basketball, and the intensity of ice hockey. No pads, no helmets, all action. Rugby wrap-up and Major League Rugby every Thursday night at 9 p.m. on Your View. Hanging out at the beach, what a lifestyle. And you could be here every day if you entered the San Diego Giving Back Raffle, a benefit for Ronald McDonald House Charities of San Diego. Grand prize is this multi-million dollar home one block from the ocean. Or you can win a sports car, a dream vacation, or cash. Everyone is guaranteed to win a fabulous prize. The Giving Back Raffle helps families in need like the Uggen family. Visit sdraffle.com to learn more. Main streets are the heart of our communities, where we connect with our neighbors, support local businesses, and share new adventures. Main Street Living celebrates all of this, bringing you uplifting stories with guests from across the country and your community. Main Street Living covers what's important to you today, from our street to your street. Join Cheryl, Danielle, and Quincy for Main Street Living, Mondays at 9 on Your View.
Watch the Austin Gilronis take on your San Diego Legion Thursday, May 28th at 5 p.m. on Your View. Welcome back. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show on the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, John Browner, and Alex Padilla. Hey, great friends. What's going on? Today is Monday, May 2nd. This is Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. We're coming to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. If you're just getting with us, we started the show today talking about Browner's performance Saturday night at Grand Comedy Club, which was off the charts. We've talked a little bit so far about the NFL draft. We're about to get into the Padres weekend. And we've also talked a little bit about all the different things that we're doing right now. Alex, it was a great idea to create a calendar on the Kaplan and crew website. That's a very good idea. We need to do that. I think I'm gonna have to call cousin Nancy today and talk to her about it. You think I should do that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to do that. I'm probably going to have to call Cousin Nancy today and figure that whole thing out. All right. Hey, um, speaking of our calendar, guys, um, this Saturday, because I, I let me just say it like this. I know that the three of us together are going to be on Friday at the Tavern, which is in Solana Beach in the front of the Belly Up. Now, Browner, you've been to the Belly Up, and you you like the Belly Up. Am I right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Big fan? I need, to organize, I, you know what, I need to do a stand up there. I know what I need to do. Well, that's not a it's not a terrible idea. Uh, Lawhead's been wanting to do a stand up there at the Belly Up as well. Um, I've seen some comedy at the Belly Up, mostly music, but I have seen like Adam Carolla. You guys know who he is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen Adam Carolla perform stand up there. So I'm I'm in. I mean, we can probably make it happen if you guys want to do that. But anyway, mm-hmm. this Friday we have a lunch bunch together. On uh, Friday, May 6th, between like 1.45 and 3 p.m. And we'll all be there for lunch. I know a lot of people have already, res- well, I mean, it's sold out. So, I mean, not a lot of people have responded. Everybody's responded. And then here's what I want to tell you guys. And tell me if you guys are available, uh, Alex Browner. Maybe put all of us on the screen. I'd like to get natural reaction as I drop this on you here for the first time. So, this Saturday, our friend Daniel Urbino, longtime great friend and CEO of Ride One Up E-Bikes. Browner, how's your e-bike going, man? How's that, how's that going for you? Great. Fantastic. Still, I need to, you know what I need to start doing? Riding in a different direction because I keep going west to the coast, west to the coast, west to the coast. I think I've been to San Diego State like three times. I need to go north, like He's straight nice. north. But that's such a harder plot to go through because I don't know how to do that, not in a car. So that's the challenge. Yeah. Yeah, so it is a little different when you're on your bike yeah, trying to figure out where to go. Claremont. I think Claremont. I think I can make it to Claremont. Dude, it's very simple. You just got to – I can guide you from here. It'll be okay. a little bit of it, but I can guide you from here. Give it to me. I think you can just work your way towards Friars. Okay. Go west. Okay. Turn on Morena. Okay. Go all the way to Claremont Mesa Drive. Make a right, and then you're going up to Claremont Mesa Drive. You'll be at that – Balboa Shopping Center. I think that works. Okay, yeah. we'll see. We'll see. We'll you know, see. You talk about Friars Road, dude. I was, um, as I went down on Saturday to the iThrive event in Mission Valley, I drove around a little bit. First of all, the Costco in Mission Valley is, Why? is honestly, it's it's a car accident waiting to happen. Why, Why even do that one? Because to turn off of, Fri- it is Friars, it, to turn off of Friars and turn right to go to the gas station at Costco, there's like a line I mean, hundreds of cars, it seems like. And then I notice that people will go around it and then they'll turn right. But that's because they're not going to the Costco gas station. They're going somewhere else. The freaking, whoever designed the Costco gas station in Mission Valley should honestly have their engineering degree revoked. (laughs) Because who the hell came up with one way in? You got to be able to bring in three, four cars at a time. If you go, if you go to the Costco on Palomar airport road, it's a very, very pleasurable experience getting gas there. But you go to the Costco in mission Valley. I don't know, man. It's, it's a freaking nightmare. It's a where you go, where you go in there is where you should go out. You should be able to, and where you go out is where you should come in. Cause that way they can direct you to the different lines. The way that they have you go in is like one line and you got to choose which gas pump you go to, but it's all out of one line. It's terrible. It is awful. I mean, it creates such a huge traffic jam. But here's my observation. I haven't been down there in a while, like just cruising around that area. 
Have you guys seen the thousands and thousands and thousands of apartments and condos and, you know, residential units that have been built in that area of Mission Valley? Mm-hmm. Have you guys know, dude, you see it all the time. It's a Vita. Oh, it's a Vita. Yeah, I don't see it. There's a great dog park up there. Fantastic. I park at the bottom of the mountain at mm-hmm. Savita Park, walk my dog all through the park, go up the staircase of the mountains, take her to the dog park. It's beautiful up there. I never go there. Never. You know, just one well, of those it's, things. It's south of the 52. So, well, I mean, but, but what's my reason for going there? You know, like exactly. I, there's, just, there's, no, there's no reason for me to be there. And I, I'm driving down the road the other day and I'm like thinking to myself, man, back in 1993, when I was uh, coming out of college and I signed with the Chargers as an undrafted free agent, I lived in that Marriott Hotel right there in Mission Valley. And that was kind of like our headquarters because all we did was go to Qualcomm Stadium because that's where the Chargers offices and training facilities were. And there was nothing really going on there back then. And now here we are like 30 years later and we all we hear about is the lack of, of housing in San Diego. And I drove down that road Affordable the other day. And I went, housing. Right, fair enough. I drove down there the other day. I was like, oh my God. I mean, first of all, the apartment complexes are beautiful. I mean, they are yes. really, really beautiful. And expensive and too, by the way. Are they? Me and Mar they... looked, me and Mar looked there yeah. and the look didn't last very long. <laughs> I mean, are they condos or are they apartments? I really didn't know Both. what they were. Yeah. There's some for sale, some for rent, uh, most yeah. for sale. And it's, yeah. I mean, the amenities that they built for those places mm-hmm. alone, the probably the HOA fees are ridiculous. And it's a, like if you go on top where the dog park is, there's this beautiful like tunnel that yeah. they built because there's a, a street that goes over it, mm-hmm. and it's like this awesome mural of like everything in San Diego. Like they got Tony Gwynn up there, they got Seau up there, Balboa Park, and when you walk towards the Savita Park, you can like look down at the entire valley, mm-hmm. and you look at these apartments, and they built no joke, dude. It looks like a Vegas like a Vegas hotel in these places. Like they just look so nice. So me and Mar went there because we look, we look, it's gorgeous, but yeah, dude, I mean, these things starting in the sixes, dude. Really? Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. I mean, I was blown away. It's been that long since I've been down there. I mean, really? I mean, the Qualcomm stadium, the chargers moved out of there in 2015, I guess. Yeah. 16, whatever it was. And so for, for whatever reason, I just don't find myself in mission Valley that frequently. And I certainly don't find myself heading East on Friars road, um, out past that Costco. I just don't find myself. Yeah. There's. Out there. They built apartments like across the street from the Fashion Valley Mall, which I just mm-hmm. thought was a flat mountain. Oh, mm-hmm. no, there's room for apartments there against a flat mountain. Yeah, yeah, there's apartments all throughout. Like when I moved here, it was just like dirt back there. Literally, I think it was a dirt yeah. yard, wasn't it? Yeah. Something like that. It was a waste yard. The waste yard. Now it's wow. all these things crazy. Man, it's craziness. It is and crazy. And the stadium is, is flying by, too. Well, listen, and you it really, have more housing, but it, it kind of tells you why all those developers didn't want the Chargers and a 65,000 seat stadium there because they're like, dude, it's too congested here as it is. We built all these condos and, and townhouses and apartments for thousands and thousands and thousands of people to live here. And now you're going to just make it more congested. Uh, listen, I, I mean, I was blown away. I hadn't been there in a while. That That's a part of San Diego that I've not been to in a long time. And I know a lot of people listening right now are like, well, what are you up to? I'm like, I don't know. I'm coastal. They're not even what you saw. They're not even done. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's many, many more. I mean, there's a lot of land still or so it seems a lot of dirt still to be made over. Yeah. Anyway, where we were going and I'm going to get into the Padres here in a second. What I guess what I wanted to get to was this. So Friday we're doing our lunch bunch, Mm -hmm. but on Saturday from 10 AM until 1 PM, we're getting together with Daniel and the crew from ride one up e-bikes. Now, a lot of people have said to me, Hey dude, I'm considering an e-bike. And I'm going to look at ride one up. In fact, Browner at the show at the comedy show Saturday night, a lot of people were coming up to me going, Hey dude, um, I'm going to, I'm going to look at one of those ride one up e-bikes. I'm like, great. So here's the story. Let me tell you the story for this Saturday. Uh, We're going to do a test ride date and it's at the location, which is at four one five Laurel street. I'm sure you guys, Alex, have you been there before? Haven't you? Yeah. To, to Daniel's main street. It's the main street from the Prado. So like if you're on that main Balboa, it's right there on the main street. Okay, 415 Laurel Street, and it's 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. It's this Saturday, and we're going to do some e-bike demo rides through Balboa Park. So, Browner, I, I suspect you'll be able to get from North Park to Balboa Park pretty easy on your Don't ride do it. up e-bike. Don't do it, Browner. I've given this much thought. Mm-hmm. I'm probably going to drive there. 
Yes. Good job. Probably gonna drive there. Yes. And then just let people know what the bikes are like. Maybe what's a good bike. What's a you know all the bikes are good, but which bike that probably fits your style more than others? The actual bike I have. I can 100% guarantee you will not be making an appearance unless, <laughs> un- unless it is smart requested. Move. Smart yeah. move. Yeah. What, what Browner is worried oh, about. Oh, you wanted be... me to bring it? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, oh, I didn't know. Oh, man, dude, my bad. Dude, right. I didn't charge it. And I just, yeah. you know. I, I had to drop to my kid off here. like a block away. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. That's a demo bike. That's not my bike. I mean, it's not oh, mine yeah. to keep. It's a demo. So look, yeah. um, this upcoming Saturday, no matter where you are in Southern California, if you're watching on TV, if you're listening on radio, on all the different audio podcast platforms, YouTube, whatever, this upcoming Saturday, 415 Laurel Street in San Diego, we're going to host a Ride One Up demo day. And just by the way, I'll tell you this right now, bring your wife, bring your girlfriend, because you cannot buy one of these bikes. If you buy one, you're going to be riding by yourself. But if you have a girlfriend, a wife, a pal, a roommate, whatever, you're going to want to buy two. And for a limited time, when you purchase two limiteds, that's what Browner is riding, or mm-hmm. two core five models, they're going to throw in another $150 off. And the limited, which Browner is riding, is already $200 off right now during their spring sale. So now it's $200 off plus $150 off when you buy in pairs. Makes the deal even better. But it's only on these two models, okay? And it's the really- core five? Um, the core five, that one right there that you're looking at, right there, Alex, right? right? Very good. And then the limited. And the limited, which is, you know, kind of their top of the line bike. Mr. Limited. Yeah. And when you buy them in pairs, you're going to save an additional $150. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, well, I want to buy one, or at least I think I want to buy one, but I'd like to ride it before that. This upcoming Saturday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., we're hosting a demo day down at 415 Laurel Street in Balboa Park. I'll be down there probably 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. Browner will swing by, although, as he said, he's coming in his car so they don't confiscate his his demo alex you want to you want to you want to try him out a little bit hey i will i will commit right now if daniel mm-hmm. commits to let me take a demo home too mm-hmm. come on man see now y'all y'all putting pressure on y'all putting pressure on him to take this one to request this one back <laughs> by now demanding vehicles as well sir not come demanding on, requesting right yeah what he's what's yeah. going to happen is browner's going to return his demo and daniel's going to go here you go it. alex yeah yep. here you go Yep. I'm not with that. <laughs> You're not with that. Huh? Not with that. Ride one up.co slash great friends. Ride one up.co slash great friends. Yeah. And uh, thanks to everybody that's already bought through ride one up. As a matter of fact, you guys will get a kick out of this. Um, I was up at a buddy of mine um, had a, has a hotel in um, the Lucadia area. And he goes, dude, for guests, look, we have all these e-bikes that guests can use when they're, when they're staying with us. And I thought that's a great idea. So I called another friend of mine who's got a hotel in Rancho Santa Fe. And I said, dude, you guys should get e-bikes for all your guests. He goes, we're actually having that conversation right now. I said, well, don't buy e-bikes until you look at ride one up. And then Daniel put together this really nice proposal for them. And uh, we'll see if, if we can make that deal happen. But listen, when you are an advertiser with this show, you don't just get us yapping about you on the air. We are like fully in business. I've talked about the HVGC guys working with them on trying to help find financing, help find additional distribution, et cetera. When you work with us, you're getting the whole schmear, baby. That's all I'm saying. Ride one the whole up. Schmear? That's right. That's Whoa, right. What? I like that. Right. It's like a big like schmear of like cream cheese. You know what I mean? Like shebang. You know, like big, big schmear, you know, ride one up.co slash great friends. All right, Alex, let's do this. Um, I will tell everybody that because the Padres were playing the pirates and they were playing on the Eastern time zone um, this weekend, I was not watching a ton of Padre baseball. Uh, games were played during the day. The timing just wasn't great. And I just wasn't sitting around watching all these games, keeping in touch, knew what was going on. I had an idea mm-hmm. what was happening, but was not like sitting around watching all day long. So Grande, why don't you take us through the weekend as the Padres beat the Pirates two out of three, and we'll take a look at what, what we've got here so far. Yeah, I mean, you you nailed it. The Padres won two out of three. On Saturday, they lost in extras because Eric Hosmer – committed a silly or not a silly error just like a very eric hosmer error if that makes Mm -hmm. any sort of sense instead of getting in front of the ball he he would uh i think they said it on major league he olayed it Mm -hmm. olay Mm -hmm. and that ball went right by him and the pirates ended up winning on a review actually because they did throw him out at home but they reviewed it and then ended up being safe uh but joe musgrove yesterday was amazing i think he's 
clearly been the Padres best pitcher so far this season. Uh, Trent Grisham actually had a pretty decent series, which was nice to see from their leadoff hitter. Eric Hosmer still leading the league and or hitting leading the entire major league baseball in batting average. Manny Machado is second. So two which of three crazy. off day today, Mike Clevenger mañana in Cleveland. That's this amazing. is what I, this is what I said when we started the season, use this formula. Beat the teams you're supposed to beat, and then if you struggle, if you happen to struggle against better teams, you will be okay in the long run. They went to Cincinnati, swept them, Jones. Two out of three of the Pirates, which they should have swept them. So now you follow that same trend up. Just give me two out of three in Cleveland, and we come back home sitting pretty, man, sitting pretty on a solid road trip. If we take two out of three in Cleveland. Well, it's only two games series. Oh, 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 then I'll take both of these. Take both. Of these. I take both. <laughs> yeah. Well, five and one on this road against trip Cleveland. So far. That's cool. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, that is super. No, no, no. That was, it's uh, five and one on the road trip so far. And yes, mm-hmm. Mike Clevenger getting his first start. I don't know how long he's going to go. I don't expect him to throw more than 70 pitches max, I would assume. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's great to see him. He hasn't pitched since the playoffs loss uh, in the playoffs of 2020. That's the last time he pitched for the Padres. Wow. So. Wow. Yeah, it's been that long. Yeah. Hey, let's let's take a look at some of these. I know you prepared some stuff, and uh, let's put it up on the screen. First, we'll start with Joe Musgrove. Uh, Joe Musgrove is four and zero so far this year with an ERA of under two. He's pitched thirty two innings with thirty three strikeouts. And you know what's what I love about this guy is that he seems to have elevated his game now that he's with his hometown team. Like, I don't know. It just seems like it 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 means more to Joe Musgrove than almost anybody else. And, you know, he's got that no hitter. He's got that mural on the side of his high school. And he just seems to have elevated his game, which I love. Um, you mentioned the, um, uh, the thing with ahead. Ken with uh, Joe Musgrove is he is on a contract year now. This is they, they settled on arbitration, but now they want to have a long term deal, which mm-hmm. I think most Padre fans, including myself, would want. I don't know what the numbers would look like, but Ken Rosenthal reported over the weekend that the Padres and Joe Musgrove are at, quote, an impasse in contract extension discussions. An impasse. An impasse. Is that different than an impasse, or is it is it the same thing? See, I like to say, I like to enunciate my words. I like to put little accentos where there isn't really one. I like to say <laughs> impasse. Okay, I like it. What, what are we giving him? I mean, it's not our money, but theoretically. What are we giving him? I would guess, according to him, yeah, a recent approximation of what they offered him was eight years, $88 million. Oh my God. First of all, that's horrible. No, that's a terrible deal. Really? Terrible. For any either? Terrible. Dude, he's, first of all, he is your best pitcher right now. He's making $8 million this year. Wait, it's terrible for who? It's For Joe Musgrove. I don't think so. Well, let me ask you a question. Um, What is you Darvish making? A lot. Chunks. Okay. What do you think? I mean, I, I would look at what Clevenger is making. Um, I would look at what Blake Snell is making. And I would ask myself, who's my better pitcher? Now, I'm not saying that Joe Musgrove is a guaranteed ace for the next five years. I'm not saying that he's going to step up into the Noah Syndergaard, uh, Walker Bueller sort of category, you know? I'm just, but. Here's your he made, problem. What? Joe, Mo, Joe Musgrove is, a, is good. He's good. Okay. He doesn't have special. You Darvis has potential to be special. Mike Clevenger has potential to be special. Still do or, or has but had? Still does, in my opinion. Still does. Blake Who? Snell has potential to be special. Quote, unquote, Mackenzie Gore oh. has potential well, to Snell be and, special. Snell and Clevenger are both making in that $11, $12 million range. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, think I about think it's, I think Joe Musgrove is a very interesting case study for the Padres because, A, yes. he doesn't miss starts. Yes. He is ERA is under four all the time. It's not under three, but it's right there. You're seeing guys across the league get paid more than him with higher ERAs. So that puts him in a, in a difficult position. The thing is, if Musgrove continues to have, let's just not even this good of a season. If he has this good of a season, the Padres screw. They're going to have to pay him a ton of money to keep him. I think they're trying to get, get it done now. Mm-hmm. But Joe Musgrove that. might be banking on himself mm-hmm. that, hey, I'm going to have a badass season and you're going to have to pay me way more. So that, mm-hmm. I think that I don't even think the numbers because that's eight years that's 88 million dollars first of all in baseball that's 88 million dollars on the table boom yours yours i would think in my opinion 
Musgrove might be wanting to take a chance on himself this year and prove that he's worth more than that. I, I listen. If I were him, first and foremost, I don't want an eight-year deal. Um, now that I would have a problem with if I were him. The eight years? Yes, that's too. I long. mean, look, look. I, listen. On one hand, here's here's how I could argue with the Joe Musgrove, dude. You're a San Diegan. This is a dream come true. You're now. Um, you're a guy that's going to live in Padres history because you have the only no hitter. And you know what? $88 million over the course of eight years, you're home. But I got to tell you, you know, you, you think about a guy like um, Madison Baumgartner, just using it as an example, right? Is, mm -hmm. Isn't Madison Baumgartner on the way down where Joe Musgrove is still oh, yeah. kind of on his way up, right? Huh? Mad Mad Madison Baumgartner is a 17, 18, $19 million a year pitcher. Clayton Kershaw, I'm not, I'm not comparing Musgrove to Kershaw per se, but Kershaw mm -hmm. is $17 million and he took a major pay cut at 17 million. So if I'm Musgrove, I'm kind of thinking that my number is probably more like 15. All right. So, so again, my number is 15. We can talk about this a little bit more Browner. I know you got a lot of strong opinions about this as well. Um, we'll talk about it. We'll get to it. What is Joe Musgrove going to do with the Padres? By the way, speaking of talking about certain things, did anybody watch last night winning time? Alex, you see the, the most recent episode? I did. Okay. I did too. And I thought last night. And I finished magic duck. You did? Yep. Oh, I'm just about to start Ozark. All right, hold on. We got a lot to get to. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and Crew. Thank you for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific, every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio and your view. Featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. You're listening to the 50,000 Watt Power House. Bringing you the new generation of radio up and down all of California. With a little bit of attitude. This is SoCal Sports Talk. The all new and mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. I'm tax attorney Adam Brewer. If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or state of California, then you don't need a tax relief company, you need a tax attorney. Call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. So I became a dentist because I just love science and I love art. I have a music background, so I wanted to do something that uh, I can use the hand dexterity that I've developed you know, through my musical training. We've had a practice in San Diego for 25 years. It's called the Super Dentist. For over two decades, I've had parents ask me the same questions on a daily basis. And so I decided to put all of this information in one place. I wrote a book, the title of it is If Your Mouth Could Talk. Because if your mouth could talk, it would tell you about the condition of your entire life. Right now, the oral care marketplace is a mess. And so we decided to launch a new company called Supermouth, which is a subscription model of oral care. And so we want to be proactively educating parents, providing the tools and the oral care products to make sure they can raise healthier, happier, more successful kids. The education piece is a key piece in our company because if you're educated as a parent, you're gonna do the right things. People can find my book, uh, If Your Mouth Could Talk, themouthbook.com and purchase the book there and also get some special gifts to go along with the book. The 2022 San Diego Loyal season continues. Live on Your View and yourview.com. Watch the San Diego Loyal host the Colorado Springs Switchbacks Saturday, May 14th at 7 p.m. Come join us at Torero Stadium and support the San Diego Loyal as they continue their bid for the 2022 USL Championship. Tickets are available. San Diego Loyal versus the Colorado Springs Switchbacks, Saturday, May 14th on Your View. Join Jane Klaus on Creative Living as she shares fun and inspiring ideas for enriching your life. I'm Jane Klaus, and on the next Creative Living, we're saving you money in your daily life. Easy steps to put cash back in your pocket. And we explore if buying an electric car is worth the cost. Watch Creative Living, Sunday night at 8.30 on Your View and yourview.com. Creative Living, imagine what you can do. San Diego Legion Rugby is back. Celebrating its fifth season of professional rugby in San Diego. Fun, excitement, entertainment. Just like all the sports you know, only better. 
San Diego Legion tickets are on sale now. Get yours today. I'm tax attorney Adam Brewer. If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or state of California, then you don't need a tax relief company. You need a tax attorney. Call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. Listen to The Mike Greenberg Show, 7 to 9 a.m. Pacific, Monday through Friday. Greeny brings his unmatched depth of sports knowledge, fun, and entertainment back to ESPN on a daily basis. The Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk, and the Mightier 1090.com. Here's Kaplan and Crew tonight's 60-second timeout with Haley Stasiak. San Diego State softball swept San Jose State this past weekend and got their sixth straight win. SDSU opened the series with a 7-1 win on Friday. On Saturday, they won 10-2 in five innings due to the run rule, and on Sunday, they got the win 8-3. Mac Barbara had three RBIs on the day in the finale, making her just the third player in school history to have at least 50 RBIs in a season. Barbara was named to the NFCA Freshman of the Year Top 25 on Thursday. She's batting 403 with 13 home runs, 11 doubles on the year. Maggie Balint recorded her 12th double-digit strikeout game of the season, retiring 10 on Sunday. The Aztecs are 33-12 on the year, 16-2 in conference play. They lead the Mountain West by three games. SDSU will take on Utah State in a three-game set this weekend. That's your 60-second timeout. Now back to more Kathleen Crew tonight. Kaplan and Crew tonight's 60-second timeout is presented by Your View. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio and Your View, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Thank you for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific, every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk. All right, guys, you're only going to see this on your view. This isn't for radio on 1090. This isn't for YouTube. This isn't for any of the audio podcast platforms. This is just for you guys that are watching on Cox Your View. The head coach of the San Diego Loyal, Landon Donovan, is jumping into Kaplan and crew. Coach, how we doing, man? What's going on, guys? It is really great to see you. How's things going? Uh, we're about a quarter of the way through the year. So not quite on the crazy grind yet, but rounding into form. So it's it's a good time of year. You know, I've only been to one game so far, but my son's coming home from college for the summer. My daughter's coming home from college for the summer. We're going to start coming to a bunch of games. The one game I was at, the first game of the season, and jam crowded. I mean, jam-packed crowd and uh, exciting. Oh, my God, what a finish at the end. So, I mean, at least the one game I've been to so far, loved it. It was awesome. How's things going with the home crowd in particular? Yeah, well, you had the best seat in the house, Scott, right behind the goal where we scored. Right. It looked like you guys maybe had a few adult beverages that <laughs> night. It was uh, That was a good night, but we have a pretty special atmosphere at – our games. Um, we don't have the numbers that Padres do or the Chargers once had, but the atmosphere I think is pretty special and unique. I think you would say having been to a lot of sporting events. So we're very lucky. We get that at Torero. The, the stadium is really suited to creating an amazing atmosphere. And I think you saw it that night. Sure did. No doubt about it. Um, how's it going for you? I mean, I always think about it from your perspective, like you didn't need to be coaching soccer um, you were passionate about bringing professional soccer to San Diego, but you have little kids. You had a great career. You were enjoying retirement. How's it going for you? Well, Scott, you know, once you have little kids, you got to find something to get out of the house. So <laughs> it was mostly down to that. Um, I love, I love what I do every day. I, there are very few people I think in life, maybe you are one of the exceptions to who get to do something they love. It doesn't mean it's not without challenges and difficulties at times, but I just love getting to come every day here and have a positive impact, hopefully, on, on a lot of young men's lives. So it's really enjoyable for me. Hey, Landon, recently you guys got to go up and uh, take on MLS's LA Galaxy. I know the result wasn't what you wanted, but the performance wasn't bad. I mean, it was only 1-0. You take that result and you tell your team, like, look, we can compete with one of the best teams in MLS and you take that going forward? Yeah, I think what people don't realize about 
our league is how good it is. And until you come to a game, you see it in person or you come to training and watch it or you watch a game like against the LA Galaxy, you don't realize how good the players are. The difference is the Galaxy you know, can spend millions and millions of dollars to get special players that we don't have. So soccer is unique in that there's 11 players on the field and scoring a goal is very difficult. In basketball, you have a guy like LeBron that player can take literally take over the game. But in soccer, you don't have that except for a certain few, you know, Messi, Neymar, a few around the world. And so that's the ultimate equalizer. And and our league is very good and very competitive in that way. And, and you saw actually a number of teams in our league actually beat MLS teams in that U.S. Open Cup where we played the Galaxy. So you can tell the levels are are much more similar than people realize. Wow. You you guys are bringing such a different energy. Like you said, your fan base and, and, and the, how passionate you guys are about, the, the fans are about the sport and the, and the game. What? How are you continuing to give back to those fans? I mean, obviously you guys are playing teams like the Galaxy. What other surprises or what are other some of the things you guys are cooking up to kind of give the fans like a thank you? Well, this sport is pretty unique, guys, in that historically the way soccer started was literally – communities just starting a soccer club and so that makes it really unique in our in our country we're used to baseball basketball football hockey where an owner you know a wealthy owner comes in and starts the the team and then it it trickles down from there but soccer is is truly the fans game so the the fans in the community are just as invested as an owner or a coach or a player and so we are, that's why when you go to Torero and you see that energy, that's the feeling you're getting. It's a little different than going to other sporting events. But for us, from the beginning, our chairman and owner, Andrew Vasiliadis, he grew up in Point Loma. His family has donated tens of millions of dollars to multiple um, causes throughout the community, uh, to Rady Children's, to uh, education, to multiple things. And Andrew's first ever meeting with us he made it very clear that he wanted this to be more than just a soccer team he wanted us to be become an institution like the padres have been like the chargers were at one point like rady children's hospital etc so we want to be a part of the community in a real way and it's important for us to live that every day so we do lots of things that we that try to benefit the community in a positive way we had a rady patient out here yesterday, ironically named Landon, told him it was a great name, <laughs> um, who was out here um, enjoying practice, meeting our guys. And that's one small way, but we're, we're, we're fortunate to have a group of guys who like to do that and have really felt loved by this community. And it's reciprocal too. Well, Landon, um, we're all going to be watching these games on Cox, your view. And I know I will see you out there this summer. I'm looking forward to getting out to more of these games. Thank you very much for stopping by and for doing this Cox Your View exclusive with us here on Kaplan and Crew. We'll see you out there, man. My pleasure, guys. Have a great weekend. All right, Coach. Take care. We are very proud to announce that the Mightier 1090 is SoCal's newest ESPN affiliate. Introducing the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. One of the largest radio stations in North America just got bigger and better. Joining forces with the worldwide leader of sports, ESPN. The Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. I'm tax attorney Adam Brewer. If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or state of California, then you don't need a tax relief company. You need a tax attorney. Call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. Hollander Dental is unique because we have been serving the Carlsbad community for over 25 years. We have a very spacious office with ample parking and state-of-the-art technology. The office has been uh, newly renovated, so all the equipment and facility is brand new. Any patient visiting Hollander Dental can expect to be taken care of at every step of their visit. With care and love and support, so when we're going through tough times as dental work is and can be, they make it easy for us as patients. Investing in your smile and your overall dental health in the long run will help you save money by preventing other medical conditions. I would absolutely recommend Hollander Dental. I do recommend Hollander Dental to anyone I know who needs something done. If you love animals, Animal Zone is for you. From rescues 
to animal experts, Animal Zone is fun for the whole family. Watch Animal Zone right here on your view, Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. And visit AnimalZone.org to learn more about the show. Thank you for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific, every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 a.m. ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk. Vanessa, you got sunscreen? Yes, sunscreen, sunglasses, and water. It's a sunny day here in Arizona, perfect for a fiesta. Well, then grab your sombrero. We're going to have some fun today on 